people think of Olympus as a camera company, but principally it's a, you know, it's a healthcare business. It's a world leader in endoscopy. So basically tubes with a, a camera or a CCD now on the end of it, which looks inside the body. Healthcare is incredibly regulated. I mean, there's a huge amount before you can actually take that product into the hospital. Uh, but once you satisfy the regulatory authorities by proving that you've tested the product and it satisfies an incredibly complex uh, process, then really, um, if you're going to be successful, it's getting that into the hands of the user, the clinician. I joined Olympus in 1980, and uh, within a year I was actively involved in Middle East, Africa, North America, and then onwards to Europe, and finally to Japan. Japan is uh, a complicated society in which to do business if you're from outside of that country. Japanese consumers are the most demanding probably anywhere in the world, probably more informed than anywhere else in the world. So the overwhelming starting point is that if you sell something in Japan, it has to be the best. Um, and everything has to be right in the process, you know, you're not giving second chances. Really you, you have to partner with people. I don't, I don't mean legally that the company has to be part-owned, but you, you, you really want to, to tread very slowly at the beginning. Um, there's a whole etiquette and protocol. But if you have something good which is selling in England or the United States and is attractive to consumers, uh, then if you show patience, um, and work alongside Japanese people and you can be successful. Japan, last year the Nikkei was up 57%, you know, one of the best performing markets. It's the third largest economy in the world. I'm a great cynic of Abenomics. I mean, Japan's uh, national debt to GDP is 245% and climbing. Now, as a country, because there's so much personal savings, the overall indebtedness of the society is better than many other places in the world. But nevertheless, uh, quantitative easing, 70 billion US dollars a month, which is you know, only 15 billion less than the US, which is an economy three times the size. You know, the three arrows of Abe, we've had fiscal stimulus and we've uh, monetary um, easing, uh, but we haven't had structural reform. And the society needs to become much more liberal, much more open. Having spent time in China, when you see this huge human demography of you know billion plus people and the same in India it's almost like going back to the beginning of the industrial revolution I mean Mexico again is, a, is, a, is an example where it's in Latin America a, a country where a lot of reform is taking place and you know the, it was seen to be this sort of almost backward you know, country in some ways and now it's a sophisticated cosmopolitan hungry you know society which wants to you know take its place at the uh, the table of you know economies and societies which are doing well a lot of times you will hear businessmen make excuses you know the, the market circumstances are very different cultural differences um, but uh, from my experience around the world the thing which made people buy those products was it a good product was it better than our competitors was it priced competitively and can you service it and I didn't find much difference be it China or Spain or Brazil, you know, the, the, the basics are there. The power and the energy um, to, to me is, is stimulating and you feel it from the moment you land at the airport in some of these places.